Unsa, Unsa, once again, back in the studio. Welcome back to the King of It podcast, lads. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. It's weird. Every time I press record and every time you press go, I get like really excited and I think it's like nerves as well. Are you going to shit your pants? I think I might shit myself, yeah. Oh, <laughs> righto. <laughs> Nothing like that. I calm yourself down. <laughs> I think it's just, we we just love talking about it, don't we? It's, it's an everyday occurrence, Craig, yeah. We were sat yesterday because we haven't watched the, the, the rally vlogs since we made them, basically. it'd be a bit weird though, wouldn't it? Oh, what are you doing tonight, Aim? Eh? Oh, I'm just um, just going to stay in and watch the videos that I made on the Mongol Rally. <laughs> Don't lie, you do it all the time. Oh, <laughs> uh, we can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we watched back the Tajikistan ones yesterday and we were sat in the car doing it because um, someone was working on the bus. Yeah. And it was just like crazy. Just think what we did. Every time I watch it back, I'm like, it's mental. It really is. It was just a wild trip, wasn't it? I loved it. And it makes you, like, as watching it, we're in lockdown still, well, kind of, like, oh, actually, from yesterday. Yeah, we can go more than five miles. five miles, yeah. But it really is, like, kind of taking a little bit of a toll now. Mm. And we're getting really excited watching other people's, like, Scotland vlogs, trying yeah. to get some inspiration to go. We just cannot wait to get back on the road, I can know, we? I know, I know. Just road tripping is just the best. It's our favourite. It's our favourite thing ever. So good. So, um... If you're brand new here, welcome back to the King of It podcast. Uh, this series in particular is the Mongol Rally, yeah. which is what we were on about, we love talking about. Yes. So if you don't know what that is, we drove uh, approximately 12,000 miles from our little hometown in Barry in Wales, yep. all the way to bloody Russia, mate. Mental scene. Not just Moscow, the other side of Russia as well. Yeah, it was. In a 1.2 litre Fiat Panda. Yeah. So uh, if you listen to the last podcast, we talked about Uzbekistan. Uh, I ended up on a drip in someone's bedroom. Um, there was so much drama in the convoy. Yeah. It was like an episode of Jerry Springer. We only touched on it a little bit because we're polite friends, you know? <laughs> and we also ended up at a house party and had a sleepover in a local's house. You cannot write this stuff. <laughs> so random. You just can't. <laughs> so if you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to episode six. On this episode, we are talking about Tajikistan. Press your face. Oh my God. Someone, you, someone you are said. banned. You are banned. <laughs> you wouldn't know how to use this. It's Sorry. a button, Sorry mate. about that. Tajikistan, a mountainous landlocked country laying at the heart of Central Asia. Mm. It's a mecca for climbing and trekking enthusiasts. Right up your street, aim. Why did we go? <laughs> Why did I go? Well, you just sat in the car whilst the car climbed the mountains yeah, and the terrain. Yeah, I don't even like walking. <laughs> the terrain here is dominated by mountainous ranges, which cover more than 90% of the country, and it has over 900 lakes. Amazing. And do you know how I know it's dominated by mountainous stuff? Why? Because I seen it. Because I was there. <laughs> you? I bloody I drove through it. I got a question. Yeah. Did you did you do the Mongol rally? The Mongol rally. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Good joke. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me dad. <laughs> oh, that'd be a bit weird. <laughs> Uh, it's slightly larger than England, with a population of just over 8.2 million. Wow. Uh, which is the population of London. So imagine stretching all those people out across the Did whole you country. Say London? London. I've been hanging around <laughs> with you too long. Say walnut. Walnut. Walnut! No, stop it. I don't say it weird. <laughs> yeah, you do. And I don't say lunch weird either. Lunch. Shut up. It's you a say it with like, an, with like an O instead of a U. Lunch. Launch. <laughs> Because I love to have lunch. Yeah. Hang on, I haven't finished my Excuse little me. spiel about Sorry, Tajikistan. Your Carry on. Um, it's bordered by Uzbekistan, obviously, because we just came from <laughs> there. Uh, to the north and west, uh, Kyrgyzstan to the north, Sick. China to the east, and Afghanistan to the south. What a bunch of countries! Like what a flipping wicked section of the world it's mad, to drive it? through. Mental. Do you reckon someone from Afghanistan is, or somewhere like Kyrgyzstan has come to the UK and been like? done a podcast and gone Scotland, bordered by England, close to Wales, <laughs> across the sea from Joe Ireland. Joe through it, mate. Joe through it. <laughs> I would love that. I would love to like, you know, I'd love, right, this is going to be would you love, a little babes? bit weird, but I'd love to win the lottery. That's not weird. Normal. Go to like Tajikistan, like pick up a family, bring them back 
Oh, or take him to like like Florida Disney or something. Who are you, the Pied Piper? <laughs> <laughs> No, I did play the recorder in school. I could play <laughs> Little Donkey really well. However, no, wouldn't that be lush though? Well, only if he wanted to life. go, like if you were forcing I'm them. I'm not going <laughs> to force him, Craig. <laughs> You're getting on a plane and you're I'm, coming with me. I'm not the dictator from Turkmenistan. <laughs> I'm just a good guy, you know? The official languages of Tajikistan are Tajiki, Persian and Russian. Tajiki, what a word. I think that might be my favourite word. That's quite cool, isn't it? Tajiki. Uh, a former member of the Soviet Union, Tajikistan gained independence in 1991. Fantastic. Congratulations. Well there done. There you go. So it is the start of the Pamir Highway. So we were about to get ready, get the car ready for one of the most adventurous and probably the most stunning drive we've ever done in our whole lives yeah i mean the the pamir highway wasn't on our list as i've said before because of altitude sickness but we did it we did and it. this was the very beginning Oof. before we took off so we needed to get a few bits done didn't we we did yeah we were we were about to when you think of the mongol rally and you see the mongol rally like videos and vlogs and posts this is the kind of scenery that you picture mm. this is this is the shit now that we're about to get into. Shit, boys. <laughs> but before you carry on, yeah. we've got a sponsor, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to babble. Have we actually still got a sponsor? Yeah. Yeah, they still sponsor us. They haven't us. kicked us out yet. Cheers, Peter, for not dropping us from the label. Love it, Peter. <laughs> So Babbel, the language app, is the the official sponsor for this season. So have you ever wanted to go to a country you've fallen in love with, say, France? Yeah. But you've, like, felt like an outsider because you don't know a single word of French? Yeah. Have you felt like that before? Hang on. You you know those things that they cook in France with, um, it's like a pastry? Croissant. Excuse me? A croissant. Croissant. Yeah. That's not, that is not right. If you were speaking to a French person right now and you said, what you're about to say, they would hit you. Go on. How would you say it? I feel like I said croissant. Oh, it's not. Croissant. With huh? a W. Croissant. 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 Trust me. Leave comments below if you're watching this. If not, leave us a review and tell Craig that he's wrong. I watched a TikTok where a girl... TikTok? Her... Oh, for 13-year-olds. No, no. The girl might have been 13, but her father was French. And she said, oh, Dad, can you pass me a croissant? And he was like... What? And then he was in his French accent. He was like, it's croissant, croissant. And he was kicking off. So it is croissant because of TikTok. Moving on. Find me that TikTok. Um, if you have felt like that, mm. then Babel will get you speaking French in a couple of weeks, mate. I love it. Don't even worry about it. F- French is like a beautiful language as well. And imagine how like posh and sophisticated you'd look if you knew that language. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine you speaking French. Can you imagine? Well, Amy's the type, right? When you when we go away. Why are you why are you smiling for? Like you're about to say something really sarcastic. <laughs> it's not sarcastic. This is the truth. Go ahead. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times she hears me say it, or how many times I, I tell her what thank you or hello or goodbye is. She never ever ever says it to people. Do you know why? Why? Because you take the piss out of me. No, I don't. You hundred percent take the piss out. No, of me. I don't. Yes, you do, and I I don't want to put myself in that uncomfortable situation. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry you feel like that. I would never take the piss out of you for speaking another language. Thank you. But you just don't know. And if it's my fault, then I'm sorry. I do. I do. It just, you know, it takes some confidence because you worry about saying it with the right accent. Yeah. So um, I don't want to show myself up, you know. Oh, you won't show yourself up. But I'm ready for it. You know, when we go to Scotland, I'll speak Scottish. <laughs> um, I'll learn it before we go. You can learn Scottish on Babbel. And I'll try and get the accent down. I learn a few words. You can't. That's not actually true. They don't have. <laughs> they don't have Scottish. I've actually got a few facts about learning languages. Go on then. So, um, did you know at least half of the world's population is bilingual? Really? That's that's fantastic, isn't it? That's that's amazing. I mean, I guess it's only fifty percent, but that is great. Yeah, I mean, how many people are in the world? Six billion. Three billion people are bilingual. Why can't we be one of them? <laughs> Well, we're, we're getting trying. There. We're getting there. We're having a go. That's what you need Babel for. So, um, the English language contains the most words, with over two hundred and fifty thousand words. Is that true? That's true. Probably because we've added loads. Yeah, like, like lo- lol. Loads of slang. Yeah. Like put like in a in a sentence. Lots. That doesn't make it. M- no, it doesn't. Does it? <laughs> 
just makes a longer sentence. <laughs> Mad Ed. So, um, all right, I'm going to ask you this as a question. So the Bible is the most translated book. Yeah, of course. Followed by which book, do you think? Biff and Chip. <laughs> uh, for anybody listening out there, Biff and Chip was a, a school book that we used to learn. No, it's Pinocchio. Is it? Yeah. I never would have guessed really that. It's really cool, isn't it? And uh, the Pope tweets in nine different languages because he's cool like that. Oh, he's definitely using Google Translate. <laughs> no, it's the Pope. But his uh, Spanish Twitter account has the most following. Really? Also, Botswana right. has a language that is made out of five click sounds. Really? Babble, can we get that on Babble? That would be amazing. I what did told, you just say? I just told you I fancied you. Oh, thanks, <laughs> babes. I would love that. I think that's so fascinating. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> um, Babbel, um, you can choose 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Mm -hmm. And also Indonesian, which is what I'm learning right now. Yeah. Um, Salamat pagi. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> sama sama. Sama sama. Someone like Pag Salam up, Paggy is good morning. Oh, okay. FYI. <laughs> I've been on Babbel. <laughs> I love it. It's a great app. There's flashcards to like, if you go through a lesson and you learn a bunch of stuff and then you get a lot of stuff wrong, it puts it all into flashcards. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and, and just go through your flashcards and be like, what can I improve on? Yeah. We've got a little promo for you all here. Oh, we're pretty <laughs> hey! Don't say we do, don't do anything for you lads. Yeah. So uh, right now, Babbel is offering our listeners six months free, free. with a six-month subscription Love with the promo code Kinging It. That's K-I-N-G-I-N-G-I-T. So that's like basically 12 months that you could be learning a beautiful new language. So all you have to do is go to babbel.co.uk. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.co.uk forward slash play. Play. And use the promo code King in it. King in it. You are welcome. Okay, we have made it out of Uzbekistan into Tajikistan, and we're in a place called Dushanbe. So cool. Dushanbe is actually the capital. Um, did you know? I did know that. Yeah. And do you know what it means? No. Do you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to read it. Uh, the capital city of Tajikistan is named after a day in the week. So the name Dushanbe means Monday in the Tajik oh, language. Oh, that's, that's not a day you want to choose. Hang on. Hang on. The name was chosen um, since Dushanbe grew to a city from a village that hosted a very popular market every week on a Monday. Oh, there we go. Well, that's not so bad. It's, all, it's an all right reason, like. <laughs> the thing is, this is, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I love Mondays. Yeah, um, we can't be friends. <laughs> what? You're one of those. You just what? Someone who works hard f to make a living. I'm you, you too. Li you live for the weekend. Monday <laughs> comes, you're like, I'm not coming in, Craig. <laughs> Can I have a day off? I'll be there at twelve. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just think people who like Mondays are a bit wrong. Really, it depends what you're doing. You know, if you've got a sick job or you don't even have a job, you're yeah. just an entrepreneur who sits at home. Hats off to you. Enjoy your Monday. You've yeah. earned it. So what about you then? Well, that's, I'm an entrepreneur. Right. I make my own money. <laughs> you know, I can do whatever I want on Monday. Can I have a dress? <laughs> <laughs> if you show up on Monday, maybe you can, yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. It won't be at 9am, but I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so we found this really cosy hostel because it, it, we've been a bit all over the place. We've been driving a lot. Everybody actually needed a loads of work done on their cars. Yeah. So we'd heard about this sick mechanic in the mm -hmm. He I was don't like, know where we heard from him. Just from other rallyers or yeah, Facebook. Just on the pipeline. Yeah. He was just known about town. So we'd heard about this guy. So we stayed in this hostel. Um, there was like a ping pong table. We were in like a 12 bed dorm. Everybody yeah. had bunk beds. It was boiling. <laughs> it was really hot. Yeah. Um, but it was wicked. So yeah, we took our cars in. We needed a few bits. What we were trying to do is get it ready for the Pamir Highway. Yeah, basically. Because we'd driven pretty shitty roads up until this point. This is where it started to get a bit terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, the cars took a battering. A battering. Because the, the roads were just so bad. So yeah. I think our shocks had gone, our back, like suspension. Yeah, um, toasted, mate. Brown all, bread. All kinds, yeah. Brown bread, dead. 
So we took it to this guy. Yeah, we needed two new shocks and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so yeah, we we were there for three days. I think so. It was a long it's time. A while there, yeah. One point, I don't know if you remember this. We went to the hotel across the room because across the road, and uh, it was like a really posh one. It was like security guards and everything to get in there because we were like, oh, we're so tired from the rally. We've been driving so much. We're so tight. Let's go and get some massages. Oh yeah. Oh, this was here, was it? It was here in the Shambay. Yeah. So we went in there. They only had space for one. So you so know, I, I did the horrible thing. I let the missus go. <laughs> the the missus. I let the missus go. <laughs> I just stood out. In the dusty road, looking at, my, looking at my fingertips Crying. for an hour. <laughs> I remember that. It, was, it wasn't cheap either, was it? No, it was about 60 quid, mate. In Tajikistan. Was it good? Yes. Was it? Yeah, I remember it being really good. Do you have good, all yeah. oils and all that? I think so. I can't really remember. What a waste of money. What do you mean? You, don't, you can't even remember it. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and also, whilst we were there, we, we ended up finding a water park. Yeah, we needed to like pass the time, and I was like... Lads, there's a water park. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. Because so everyone was, at this point as well, a, a lot of the team morale was down. Mm. Like, I remember Rob and Robin, their car was in a bad place. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they have to have their engine taken out? They took the whole engine out, yeah. 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 There's a photo, I just found it, of Rob, and it, his engine's hanging from a chain, and he's just looking it. at it. Like... I remember it, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Cause, yeah. Because that guy, like, everybody took their cars to that guy because he would work on it, like, throughout the night. Mm. He'd get it done as quick as he could for you. So, mm. yeah, what a guy. Yeah, what a ledge. So, yeah, we wanted to boost the whole team up, so we were like, let's go to the water park. Yeah. And uh, they had beers and stuff there. It was wicked, wasn't it? It was really good, yeah. It was a brilliant day, like, lovely, sunshiny day. And we all went and just, yeah, we ha- we needed it, didn't we? Yeah, fully. Because it, it's so hard. I mean, it sounds like we're having the best time on the rally, but it is so hard, like, mentally. So, yeah, whilst we waited for the cars, it turned out Rob's, Rob and Robin's car was going to have to stay in for, like, two or three extra days. The blue poo, yeah. Which, at this point, like, we were so tight as a convoy the thought of losing another team, it was yeah. devastating, wasn't and it? And everybody had, like, you wouldn't want to lose anyone. Yeah. You wouldn't even go, oh, um, John. Don't yeah, really like I that guy. I don't really mind about John. Everybody was, was an asset. Yeah. Everybody was so funny and such a character, and they all had their own certain qualities that we all just loved. Mm. So we didn't want to lose anyone. It was, like, tight, wasn't it? Yeah, and and I felt so gutted as well because Rob and Robin were so keen to do the Pamir Highway. Yeah. So they they had a dilemma, which we'll come on to later on. Um, But, yeah, so, and and I'm not sure what the reason was, but the Italians had to leave their car as well. I think they might have had to have it raised or something a bit more as well in in preparation. Yeah, so we ended up getting our, our... Car raised by about four inches. Mm-hmm. We finally found two brand new tires that fit our car. Yeah. And we had two new shocks. Yeah. So Fernanda was like pimped out, ready to go. Yeah, she's probably a brand new car again, sort of. So yeah, the only shit news of that, we, we left Rob, Robin and the Italians. Mm-hmm. Um, so it ended up just um, our our team and the Tyrann- Tyrannosaurus wreck. Yeah. So Ollie, Aiden and Sam. Shout out to those boys. Shout out to those boys. Honestly. Do you love Hats off to <laughs> the lads. Um, especially Aiden as well. Well, all of them. But Aiden was the MVP, wasn't he? Yeah. He helped us so many times. He was he was there to like... Because we were, we were like the annoying people, weren't we? <laughs> as in like, we would just stop, play football. Yeah. We'd wander around the, a supermarket for an hour. <laughs> And Aiden would like keep us on track. He'd be like, "All right, guys, we have gotta keep going," and not in like an, an annoying way. He yeah. he just kept the order, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs> did we say on this podcast about how people thought we might have been because we were YouTubers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We mentioned that. Yeah. So yeah, no. I'm just I'm just glad because those boys they truly helped us and they they want to keep the spirits up and keep the laughs going as well. So. Yeah, so funny. Like yeah. laughing every day with them. Yeah. So we were off. We were ready to get back on the road. All of us were just buzzing because our cars were fixed and we were ready to tackle the Pamir Highway. But it was bittersweet, wasn't it? It was bittersweet because we, we were leaving the guys. The yeah. yeah. So the day was here. We were finally about to tackle the Pamir Highway. We've mentioned it a few times. What actually is AIM? Uh, okay, so the Pamir Highway, um, also known as the M41. Did you know that? <laughs> no. No, <laughs> it's a bit random, isn't it? it Sounds is like random. a motorway. <laughs> So it's a highway that goes through the Pamir Mountains uh, through Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan and Central Asia. 
It's also part of the Silk Road. Um, it goes through one of the most impressive remote and wild mountain ranges in the world, Craig. Oh, baby. And it borders Afghan, Afghanistan. And obviously you can see the Afghani villages from the side, can't you? Yeah. As we drove past, we could see them and there was people waving. Um, so to do this, you will have to climb 4,600 metres high, Oof. which is where the... Uh, where the old altitude sickness comes in. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, basically it's like really frequently unpaved road services and there is brutal temperatures on it. However, Mm. it's a traveller's dream. It is. It's a traveller's dream, Craig. It's also the second highest international highway in the world. Yeah. Not surprising really at that height. What's the first then? Uh, The M4. No. (laughs) I haven't got a clue, actually. You can't come to what me is the with first? that fact if you don't know the first Google one. Google it. Find out what the first highest international highway. Some live Googling for you here, lads. Karakoram. Where's that? The highest paved international road in the world, the N35, um, is Pakistan. Pakistan? Yeah. Wow. But we were really close to Pakistan being in Tajikistan. There's only one small like road through a mountain that actually separates the two. Really? Yeah. I didn't think it was bordered by Pakistan. Well, there's mountains and then there's Pakistan. (laughs) But it's really close. It's only like a... It's like a road that literally separates them. From the get-go, it was incredible, wasn't it? As soon as we, like, touched the thing, there was, like, a little gate. It wasn't really much of an announcement to be like, this is the Pamir Highway. I know, I wish there was. Yeah. See, if I win the lottery, I'd put one of them in. It'd be great. (laughs) But it was just, like, orange, winding, dusty roads with, like, sheer drop-offs... It was goat herders with like hundreds of goats. Loved it. Um, like mini waterfalls. And then you you would come round a, a huge like corner and then you'd just see a massive U-bending river, like a big brown river. Mm. And the rivers would change colour as well. Sometimes mm-hmm. they were like deep chocolatey brown and they'd be like electric blue. Yeah. It was fascinating. The one thing you've missed out of that, the most important thing, was the mountains. The mountains. The, wow. Yeah, just... It was just like a little chocolate mountain. A like little? Massive chocolate. A little massive but chocolate mountain. it wasn't mountain. brown, it was like terracotta. <laughs> a little terracotta mountain. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> but yeah, they were massive. And yeah, it was just absolutely beautiful. Like the the scenes, the scenery, the snow-capped mountains, just everything about it was just worth going for just to see it. Yeah. You know? It was also a little bit bittersweet because you were like, it was incredible, a view. every You could look out of every window and it was a postcard. Mm-hmm. But you were driving on some of the shittest roads we've driven on. Yeah. And also, like, you had to fully concentrate. if Because we took it in turns, we rotated the driving. Yeah. If you weren't concentrating, like, you would be in... You'd probably die because you'd go off the, the, yeah. the edge of the oh, cliff. Because yeah. yeah. there was no barriers no. for most of it. Um, so you had to be locked in. You had to watch for potholes. Um, but if you were a passenger, you could just look around and it was just... Mm. Stunning, mate. Yeah. Absolutely one of them. I don't know why I've just thought of this, but the, remember seeing that guy who was on the back of a horse, like no, nothing, no safety gear, and he didn't have a helmet on or nothing. And he had, what was it, like a gap jumper or something? A UFC jumper. UFC. <laughs> <laughs> How random is that? It was random as This hell. is like so far from home and everything's so different, you know. And there was all, when we even got to begin the Pamir Highway, there was all these kids that were just like, wow, like, weren't expecting to see us. And they ran alongside the car and we like high-fived them all. And yeah. it was such a welcome. It but was. They're all, they're all wearing like, you know, like your nan wears like a long dress to go to bed in. <laughs> It's like a big nighty. They all had them on. Yeah, they did, didn't they? See, now, if I won the lottery, <laughs> I would go and pimp them all out. No, I wouldn't pimp them out. That's not the right word. That sounds like you're part of the sex slave trade. Um, I'd give them new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. Uh, but yeah, I remember one moment we were like driving along and we got flagged down by these these local guys and they gave us eggs. Uh, we're vegan, mate. What are you doing? No. Uh, what are you playing at? It was wonderful. <laughs> they had like the proper little Tajiki hats on. Um, I'm only joking. It was really sweet. Little flat ones. And he came over and he like held it in both of his hands. It was. was. super cute. It was like, so nice. Such it, a kind gesture. Yeah. It obviously like that goes to show like how much he cared about that egg. Yeah. Like what they value in their life in those villages, you know? Yeah. But the egg was so important that he used both hands You'd have probably tried to fling well, it's po- it in. It's probably because it's an egg, isn't it? You're not going to want to drop that. No, yeah. But... You're going to balance it on his nose and pop it through the window, is he? Well, 
that would have been good to film. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we kept driving. Um, there was like a few passport checks. Um, I remember there was one we were stuck at for a while. I'm not sure what they were doing, but yeah, I think they were they were being like extra careful um, with the passport checks. And then we we found this incredible camp spot. So yeah, we drove all one. day. I think yeah. we did about eight or nine hours. It was a big shift. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we found this spot next to the river. There was nobody. We we saw like one guy in a horse every. Yeah, Three there was hours. like no cars though. We didn't pass any cars. No, no, we we passed a couple, but they w- they were few and far were they, between. What were they called? Like lad lados or something? Larders, larders, something like that. Super old, wicked cars. Yeah. that I love to <laughs> own. Really cool shapes. Would you get one if you won the lottery? Uh, yeah, and I take it to um I- exhibit to pimp my ride. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually West Coast Customs. Oh, whatever. uh but yeah the camp spot was unreal and uh yeah everyone was just in wicked moods like even though the boys took about an hour to set up their tent and we just went that's it see pop-up tents mate yeah done get a pop-up tent for sure but a waterproof one because that does help as well yeah but it was great wasn't it will was just in his element he was in a he was buzzing he was in a good mood everyone was in great moods he's trying to find like goat hair to like start a fire and (laughs) Proper beer grills in it. He, he was, was like, right, her. you set the cam. I'm off. Yeah, uh, he, man of the wild, I will, isn't he? He'd always build a fire, but it was wicked because yeah. he, he loved it. And, but we, uh, we never really sorted an itinerary for it. Yeah. Because, like, you know me. What did you say yesterday? You were speaking to a guy and he was like... He said, oh, I just want to drive to Scotland, but my missus wants an itinerary. I was like, I literally had the same conversation <laughs> just now. But it's great, though, because me researching, like, Tajikistan facts now, I'm finding all these bloody spas and saunas that we missed. I would have had them for us to go spa to. Spa and a sauna? Why would you want to do that in the Tajikistan? Why Pami- not? It would have been an experience and a half. You can only imagine what they would look like. <laughs> so, yeah, I was a bit gutted because, obviously, it wasn't on our itinerary. I didn't make an itinerary for it. Um, but, yeah, I think the worst part about it, though, was... We didn't, we didn't, because, you know, you only have to climb like a thousand meters a day. We didn't do it gradually. We didn't yeah. do it gradually, no. So I feel like we were quite high when we first settled down. Yeah, we weren't too high. I think we were only about a thousand meters after the first day. Okay. Because we hadn't got to the full incline. This was the second day we shot ourselves in the foot there. Oh, it just all went tits up. <laughs> but yeah, that camp spot was wicked. You had your little Turkmen tracksuit on, didn't you? Yeah, it was kind of like, so we just did a pull-in on this massive pull-in. It was kind of like a little section right next to a huge river lake. Another chocolatey one. Yeah. and just River about, lake? Yeah. What's a river lake? It's a, a river slash a lake. <laughs> it's massive. So, um, yeah, we got, like, if you get the drone up and you can just see us as little people surrounded by huge, like, peachy dark peachy mountains mm. it was beautiful that was a great description babes. thank you i was still quite ill though because bearing in mind about two days ago i was in the hospital with a drip oh yeah so i had like all these cold sores on my lip i looked a mess my yeah. skin was like gray yeah you weren't great <laughs> uh, but i was on the mend um but the toughest part was yeah the altitude so um, we actually took altitude sickness tablets and uh remember we mentioned the other team team shenlong if you listen to the last podcast they were with us but they just kept driving off they buggered off yeah they're like see you later lads we're gonna make, put the miles in bah. um but we were on whatsapp and they told us that they got so high and they tried to sleep mm-hmm. and they f- they all had like really bad headaches and felt really sick they woke up at like five in the morning and just had to carry on driving because they couldn't sleep yeah they had to come down because they were too high yeah so i think anxiety just kicked kicked in for me then yeah and it's not good when you're not sleeping well not eating well and you've got anxiety and you've just been to the hospital is it that, that was you though yeah well i had all that as well oh. <laughs> i was worried about the the altitude i was worried because i thought you were going to get it yeah and i was worried that i would get it as well but if anybody's going to get it you know it's going to be amy <sighs> b because i'm lucky like that but even if i didn't get it i would have talked myself into thinking that i had it mm. <laughs> That's how my brain works. <laughs> so that's the reason we, we were against doing the Pamir Highway was because we were so worried that you would get so sick on it because mm-hmm. we'd watch vlogs and people were like laying in their cars like looking like death and yeah. I was like, oh, we can't put you through that. Yeah. But we just got the tablets from like Tajikistan Town or something, didn't we, before we went? Is that what it's called? No. Tajikistan Town. <laughs> maybe Dushanbe. Just touch down in Tajikistan Town. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you're worried about anything, maybe medical while you're on the Mongol Rally, there is pharmacies across the whole 
country. Across the world, yeah. Across the world, yeah. You'd be all right. So the next day we got back on the road um, and the roads did get bumpier. Hang on a minute. Um, We've kind of just like swept over my... uh, Turkmenistan tracksuit. I did mention it, but you just brushed yeah. past it. Yeah, I didn't mean to not not talk about that. You want to expand on it? I mean, it deserves its own part. It's really. a great trackie. You were supposed to wear it today, but you forgot. Oh, no. Even though you Next should have should have wore it on the Turkman podcast, really. It made sense. I've still got it. Um, you had some cracking outfits. The oh. day before, you looked like T- Tim Enman, remember? You were calling me Tim Enman, yeah. White, white shorts and a white top. Wimbledon finals. Taking a couple of people to the, the championships in tennis, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, that Turkmenistan tracksuit I got in Turkmenistan. Uh, end of story. Brilliant. Moving on. So, um, yeah, the roads were getting bumpy. The scenes were getting more amazing and the heat was getting more intense. Yeah. It was sweltering, mate. But in the night, it got cold, didn't it? It did, yeah. Which was lovely. Yeah, it was nice. Because we'd been, like, so hot for, the for like, the last month and a half going through all those hot countries mm. and a bit of cool in the evening was what the doctor ordered. Yeah. Yeah. And um, as we were going, the mountains just seemed to get bigger and bigger and and bigger. It looked like Mars a little bit, didn't it? Because there was times where we would like, you would go up so high, up these winding roads, and then you come all the way back down, you'd be in a valley. Yeah. Because you were in the valley, the mountains just looked triple as high. Amazing. It was incredible. I would love to just go for a little walk down one of those valleys now, just have a look around. I know. We really took it for granted when we were there, and we said we would as well, didn't we? Yeah. We were so tired. I know, we were knackered. Just... It just absolutely took it out of us, but yeah, what I'd give to be back there now for sure. Yeah, well, maybe not this particular place. I don't know if you remember this, but um, at one point we were in the middle of nowhere, and the boys were behind us, and uh, we lost them. So the rule was, if someone like disappeared in your in your rear view, yeah, you'd have to go back for them. You stop and wait, but obviously, go back, yeah. for and the babes was shit. Mm. So we lost the boys, and we we're like, oh, let's just send the drone and try mm. and find them. Yeah, the drone started playing up, didn't find them. No. Um, and then whilst we were waiting, Amy was like, I need to go to the toilet. And Will was like, there's a sign by there. Make sure you read it. What did the sign say? Uh, landmines <laughs> active. So, um... Fucking landmines. Like. I didn't move a single inch from where I was stood. <laughs> uh, went back up inside me. Didn't need the toilet anymore. <laughs> oh, thanks for the information. <laughs> I can't remember if I needed to poo. But, um... <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Yeah, that's dangerous. So stick to the roads when you're on the Pamir Highway. It was mad as well because it was like a it was like a sign with a fella on it, um, and it, it was like an explosion. And then he was like up in upside down in the air. All his limbs, just, man. all his limbs are still attached. Yeah. They definitely wouldn't be attached. Well, you'd be obliterated, mate. He was a lucky guy. <laughs> it's mad. So it turns out Ollie had actually popped a tire. Of so course. the boys like changed the tire. I wonder how many we did between the whole convoy. It wasn't that many, I don't think. It would have been at least 12. 12? Yeah. Well, Between we did, all of us. We did two. The who, boys who, did sorry, two. Sorry, who, who did two? I did two. Oh. I'll take that claim. <laughs> Pop two tyres. When? When? Oh, just on the Mongo Rally. Like. We weren't concentrating, Craig. I was concentrating fully. There was a big rock in the road mm-hmm. twice. So you'd think you'd have seen that. Don't turn into Jessica anyway, Burke. Anyway. If you're listening, Jess, you gave me too much shit while those <laughs> pop tyres. Um, right. We were just, uh, what do you call it? Beating your balls. <laughs> no, that's not right. What is it? Busting your balls. Just busting. Don't your be balls. beating my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody be touching Craig's balls. <laughs> oh, dear. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, it. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, so we reached a, a checkpoint. No. I'm skipping ahead. So I've put you off now, haven't I? Yeah, all this ball talk. I'll I'll support you. I'll make sure nobody touches you. <laughs> Thanks, babes. <laughs> so we were we reached about three thousand two hundred and fifty-two meters. Okay. Uh, and the reason we knew this was because there was these weird like stone. They almost looked like bus shelters, but I don't think there was any buses going around those neck of the woods. I don't think so. Um, Wouldn't be surprised though. Yeah. If they drove like maniacs when, you know, those photos, videos you see on Facebook <laughs> of like people just screaming, but <laughs> yeah. the driver's done it for like 50 years and he knows the way. Knows it off by heart. But yeah, they would like graffiti how high you were in meters mm. in red yeah. or paint yeah. or on these things. So that's how we knew. But there was actually villages and hostels on the 
Pamir Highway what wasn't there. Yeah. I expected it because I didn't do any research to just be one full road mm. with nothing on it. So I was like, we need to stock up on food and this and that and the other. Yeah. But yeah, there was there was shops and it was, but it was like you would drive for hours and hours and hours and you'd have to go up and down, up and down about six mountains mm-hmm. and then you'd find a town. Yeah, yeah. It was a while, yeah. So there was this one section which um I know, like, I, ha- I hate people going on about drones when they film stuff because it's just like the, the equipment shouldn't get in the way. But there was this valley that we went through and our, our drone had stopped working and it was incredible. It was just like a huge drop off to the right. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing is when you do the highway in a car, there's so many people doing it on bikes, yeah. like maniacs going mm-hmm. up and down these mountains on bikes. Um and I wish we had the drone because that scene would have been absolutely outrageous. You know, the one where it, it went all the way down into that valley and then we got to that um, checkpoint with all the army guys. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that drive? No. You don't remember that? Oh, it was, mad- oh, it was madness. I loved it. So, um, yeah, we got to the uh, the next checkpoint. Um, and the reason that there were so many checkpoints is because we mentioned this in the other podcast. There was um, some bikers who were actually killed. Cyclists. Yeah. Cyclists. Cyclists on the Pamir Highway uh, on the 30th of July, um, 29th of July. So I, I think we were there in like August. Yeah. And we'd heard about the news like as we were driving. So we we're like, oh shit, this is a bit terrifying. Mm-hmm. So I'll just read out. This is according to Wiki. Um there was a terrorist attack against cyclists in Tajikistan. Four Western cyclists were killed while cycling in the Dangara district and two more were injured after five Islamist militants rammed them with their car, got out of the vehicle and stabbed them. Yeah, that's a bit terrifying. Crikey, yeah, it was. So the attackers in the posthumously released video pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. Okay. Um, but later, the Tajik authorities downplay the IS responsibility, blaming instead the Islamic Renaissance Party of Tajikistan. Okay. People were caught for that, though, weren't they? They were caught and killed, yeah. I hope they were the right people. I know. They don't fuck about over there, do they? No. They like, with you, mate. Boom. See you. Done. Yeah, that's mad. Imagine that in this country. I know. Not even a trial or anything. That's crazy. So that was like... That was playing on our minds a lot, I think. It was for us, but then it was for the boys coming as well. I think that was a reason why we were like, oh, we're not going as a big convoy. No, we were a small convoy. Yeah. And, you know, I think we'd had a chat about what we would do if it happened. But yeah, it was highly secure with yeah. a lot of military guys in the whole army getup. And like it? AKs. And they yeah, had, yeah, they were literally on like a lot of corners just, just patrolling. Just walking, yeah. So yeah, it was not going to happen again. <laughs> So after a lot and lot and lot of driving, it's not like Scylla Black. Yeah, but I mean, it was like, <laughs> how long does it take to do the Pamir Highway? I haven't actually got a fact on how long it is. I don't know. Three to four days we were driving. Yeah, it was a long old time. Yeah, so people cycling, you're bloody mad, mate. You're nuts, mate. Um, we, we we can never be friends either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing a lot of mates here because my inability to, well, move that well. <laughs> <laughs> don't like to walk, definitely don't like to cycle. Sound like an invalid. <laughs> so yeah, after driving a lot, we found a supermarket and a, and a small little town, which was mad. And it was, it was a, next to like an electric blue lake, which was incredible. Mm. Is this the one with McDonald's in it? That wasn't McDonald's, no, that's coming up. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, we stocked up on food and drink and we were quite shocked to see it. Um, and it was nice because there was aircon in there as well. <sighs> In the oh, shop. You just love a good aircon shop on this drive. Even honestly. though we had it in the car. Oh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> but it was all dusty still in the car. It was stinking. Yeah. Minging. It was dirty. And at one point, we stopped off for petrol. Uh, and the boys, there was a couple of guys there. Because um, we were so close to the... We were on the border of Afghanistan. So there's our road. And then there's a lake, a river. And then there's Afghanistan. And you can see people, can't you? And you it's could so wave. Amazing, and they yeah. would wave back. And oh, it was great. Mad. Yeah. And there was like a, a section we found and it was like a little beach. So there was sand That's that went right. into the river. And there was yeah. people swimming yeah. as well. And um, yeah, and we were just like waving to the people of Afghanistan. Yeah. Crazy. Really like, what crazy. are we doing there in a little bit of panda? I know. And they're probably thinking, <laughs> what on earth are you? <laughs> yeah, I know. But we wanted to actually go to this market that Ollie had found out about. Mm. So you... There's a market that's right on the border and you can cross into uh, Afghanistan. So you're officially like in Afghanistan, you get a stamp on your passport. By going to this market, yeah. And you can go and shop in the market. But because of what happened on the highway yeah. with the cyclists, they closed it. Yeah, so we had to shame. give it a skip. It would have been wicked. I would have loved that. Yeah, that was gutting. But the boys did find a couple of fellas in the petrol station who mm. were selling like 
Afghanistan hats and scarves. So they, Sam and Will bought some hats, didn't they? Yeah, little flat numbers. They look like bakers. So as we were taking in all this lush scenery of the river and Afghanistan, I popped a tyre. Yeah, you did. Boom! Gone. <laughs> <laughs> you were fuming with yourself. I was annoyed. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I and I think um, there was like there was like tension in the car a lot, especially with the driving, because people would have digs at other people for their driving. And because of our back box, like early on, we, when we would brake, it would start bouncing. Mm. So we would, you know... People would say things back and forth. You're talking about people, yeah. I'm not sure what you're on about, Craig. Um, <laughs> would you like to elaborate? Well, me and Jess had like a little back and forth yeah. with the driving. And so then when I popped the tyre, Jess was like, Ha! Ah, ah, ha! You popped the tyre! <laughs> you map it! And so that made it worse. You were raging. So like, oh, fuck's sake. I don't know who had to go at me. I, I, I like to think I did a little bit of driving, but I didn't do like you did about 10 percent, i think no that's not right i'm not going to throw myself under the bus because i feel like i did do enough i did my days when i needed to do them yeah but yeah i didn't have any beef with anybody that's your problem oh I didn't, no beef mate i don't like <laughs> drama you know so we had to change the tire but it was at the time i was fuming but i wish i could have gone back and just like laughed about it and just took it in the sights like yeah. just looked at afghanistan and be like changing a, the tire looking at grip. afghanistan get a grip Luckily, the boys were with us because they had a jack because we didn't even have a bloody jack, mate. We didn't take it. Didn't we maybe had a hammer. That might be been it. I can change tyres on a bus now. Look at me. Ah, uh, so could I. When I'm told to do the right knots. You did. Nuts. You undid the wrong ones, didn't you? Uh, that's what you told me. So we looked for ages for somewhere to sleep and we ended up at this family's home. It was like a restaurant. It was pitch black and there was literally no hotels anywhere. Did we stop to like ask them directions for a hotel and they were just like, stay here? I think so, yeah. I think that's what happened. And so they do what they do a lot over there, which is they try and look, they try and help you out. Mm. So they're like, you can stay here. And they, and they said, come with us. We ended up in their attic with these fold out blanket yeah. things it was their restaurant wasn't it and I, I think they had like their house in the back or whatever and then some spare weird bedroom with loads of crap in it and i thought i think we went up there because we wanted to go to bed early they'd offered us food which was like meat and onions it looked a bit dodgy didn't it yeah so we passed on that and literally because i don't think we had any food so we just went yeah to bed. they had packet noodles as well so we had some more noodles of oh course. noodles fantastic but they made us like the local hot tea, which was nice. Mm. Um, but the worst part was when we were in the attic, we like, oh, finally get some sleep. And uh, it yeah. was like this dusty, go on. They had those like mat- thin mattresses that they all have in the Central Asia part, you know, those thin ones we all slept on. So we crept up to the attic, thought, oh, well, I will have an early night now, get some, get some sleep in, ready for the morning, because I think it was my drive the next morning. Um, and we had like a, th- did we have a sheet or something to put over us? They were like the little blanket things that they've got in yeah. most places. But I think it went from your feet and it maybe come to like your Adam's apple or something. It didn't quite cover everything. And uh, there were spiders and they crawled over everything. There must have been hundreds of them and we were just like, can't deal with this. So we had to go downstairs, didn't we? It was horrible. It was like, at first you were like, oh, it's just like a bit of something falling off the ceiling. And then you just realised it was, yeah. It's moving. Creepy crawlies, it was minging, but it cost two pound the night. Happy days. And uh, the best part was they had this luxury toilet out the back as well, which was a hole in the floor with a ten foot pile of shit ten underneath foot pile it. Of shit. Ten foot pile of shit. It smelt horrendous. I-, I thought when we were taken to it, because it was like, you know, a good hundred yards away from the actual house, that it was like a communal, like the village toilet, but it wasn't, was it? I literally thought everybody in in the place had used it. They must have, because it was. It was disgusting. Rotten. You could smell it before you got there. There was like a little uh, bath, like a shower curtain pulled over it, flapping in the wind, and it was just the worst thing ever. And now they were bad on the rally anyway. They were bad, but this was one of the memorable ones. Yeah. I don't know where I went then after that, because I couldn't do it. You literally couldn't even hold your breath, because you just cough. Just minging. And then, so after the spiders... We couldn't sleep in the attic, so we went all downstairs and we all tried to sleep in the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like a little raised platform bit and we all had sleeping bags. And uh, the windows, there was no windows, it was just holes in the walls so that you could feel the breeze coming through, which was nice. But there was flies everywhere. everywhere. So you're like, 
they would land on your mouth and they would just land on your mouth and in your ears all night. Trying to get to sleep on that. That's just <laughs> it's not, a nightmare. Oh, so annoying. Because it was too hot to sleep with like anything over your face. So you had to like just have them land on you. Worst night ever. Yeah. Thanks though. I mean, we appreciate it. So then it was just more of the same the next day. It was just like stunning drive, incredible scenery. Uh, and we were heading to a place called Korog which was um, the next town, the one with McDolan's in. McDolan's. So it had a dodgy knockoff of McDonald's. And the guys got burgers. I don't have a fucking clue what was in them, but they looked horrendous. I was like, Jess, is it it a Big Mac or is it chicken? She's like, I don't know. (laughs) More like a rat mac. Oh, God. Well, as you walked in, it was so weird because it was like one of the top rooms of like a kind of like a flat, a a set of flats or something, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and you walk in and it's got the, the big R- M, the arch, the other golden arches. So they it was a complete knockoff. They weren't even trying to make it look like it was something different. And like his auntie or something had written McDolan's on the side of the wall in paint. It wasn't even like a professional like artist. It just, yeah, it wasn't the, the best. But we had some chips, didn't we? We had some chips. That yeah, was the safest option. Can't really go wrong with potatoes. Yeah. As we were moving up, the altitude started to get thinner. Um, we were we were all still buzzing. It does a weird thing to your brain when you get to altitude. Um, so at one point we got out of the car and we started dancing and I got a bit mental with the air guitar. And uh, I got back in the car and I was like, it felt like I'd done a 100 meter sprint. I was like proper short on breath. None of you were taking the tablets by this point, had you? No. And um, I don't know if I voiced this to anyone at the time because I... I thought if I said it out loud, it would make it worse. But I was getting really anxious mm. as we were creeping up. I think I knew that. I think you told me. Yeah. I, I was like getting worried because I was short of breath and I, it just didn't feel good. It felt like I had about 10 coffees. Yeah. Um, the, the the day we got onto the Pamir Highway, though, like the first step we put over, the first toe that just inched over into the Pamir Highway, I was like, I'll just use a tablet. I like <laughs> I had them from the beginning. I started taking them because I was just that worried. But yeah, I think it was more placebo for me thinking, well, I've taken them, so I should be okay, you know? Mm. I didn't even know you were taking them. I would have voiced it. One going in. Kept that secret. Did (laughs) I take any? You did eventually, yeah. So yeah, the worst part was after the air guitar, about five minutes later, the car broke down because of the altitude. Oh God, yeah. And then we had to push it. So not only was I anxious and short of breath, I had to then push a car. Yeah. Up a hill. Yeah, it just takes your breath away, doesn't it? There's not an... There's not as much air up there, which is what makes breathing more difficult. Yeah. And like you said earlier, like you're supposed to acclimatize, you're supposed to go up to a certain level, acclimatize, come back down, and then go up and yeah. then down and up. Mm. But we just literally drove up. Oh, we just go straight to the top. <laughs> Why not? So we ended up finding a hostel um, at 3,800 meters. Wicked. And we got there. No, remember, we got to a yurt beforehand and they were like... Oh, yeah, they wanted like 25 quid or something. It was like the middle of the night. They didn't even turn the lights on when we when half of you came in. I stayed in the car because I was feeling really dodgy at this point. And I was just like, I just need to get somewhere to lay down. Um, and was it because it was too expensive or because they didn't have room for all of us? Yeah, they couldn't fit us in. So we had I to think. carry on driving and we got there at like, just say 10 because it was dark. Yeah. And then had to carry on. And you just don't know where you're going to find a place. Like, I think Aiden was looking on, it wasn't Airbnb, but it was kind of like an app to show you where you can yeah, go. Yeah, I think we were using uh, Maps Me because it would tell you if there was like a little homestay or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, everyone was feeling the altitude. Um, it, it had me feeling like all kinds of weird. Yeah. And and just had a terrible sleep. It was tr- like trying to sleep after having like 50 coffees. Just like ultra caffeine boost. I remember then in the morning, because <laughs> we all slept so badly. I didn't. You slept well, yeah. It, this is my default mode. Like when I get sick, if I get anxious when I'm traveling, like if anything happens like that, I sleep and I'm out. I didn't wake up a single, a single, yeah. I said to Ollie, I was like, can you get me a bucket? Because I thought I was going to be sick. In the morning? No, in the night. Just before we went to bed, I think I was thinking all kinds of stuff. But I, I was, I think I was putting it into my own head. Mm. So, it, like, luckily he found me a bucket, but I wasn't sick. And yeah, I was out yeah. for the whole night. I remember in the morning, Ollie was like snoring. He was like, <sighs> and I was, I was looking at him because I was like walking past, and he literally opened his eyes and went, "You're right, mate." 
It's so funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm fine, mate, you. <laughs> That's a bit terrifying it as well. It was a bit terrifying. I was like, whoa. My gran used to do that with gin. She, <laughs> she'd like fall asleep with a gin in her hand and then I'd walk past and she'd throw the gin up and go, oh, do you want to get me another one? <laughs> and I'd be like, I don't know, Millie, you were snoring five seconds ago. Slim Sadie always at it. Yeah. Yeah, the best part about that hostel was the next day the, the lady she ran like the hot water for us mm-hmm. and she took us to like this little wash room it was like, like a sauna i'll prepare the shower oh. and i was like what do you mean babes we hadn't washed for about three days probably yeah. four days i I, ca- I don't remember i mean we went in a couple of lakes but it wasn't a wash was it yeah i think my hair started to mat <laughs> that's right Just a couple of dreadlocks like there was nothing in it I didn't have any hairspray or anything but it was matting at the back that's what happens on the rally <laughs> Grim. There's so much dust in that, isn't it? Yeah, we got back on the road. Hang on, talk about the shower. So she prepared the shower, which was in like a different section of a, a building. It was a different building, wasn't it? Mm. And uh, it was basically just like these three tubs. One had cold water, one had hot, and you use the other one to sort of ladle them both in and stick it over your head. Mm. It was like a little sauna, wasn't it? Yeah. It was kind of like like a locker room for like a young football team. <laughs> strange I why know. a young football I team because it was small because <laughs> it was small and you, you you sat down and you just ladled all this water and it felt heavenly oh, great, it did didn't it? it did There's something about it's beautiful water just like a baptism of for all the dirt and yeah. grime from the driving and we were high so i think it was quite cool up there so having a hot shower it was quite warm yeah even though you had to do it yourself was oh, the, the best thing it was glorious it was glorious yeah so we were kind of Feeling a little bit better about um, the altitude, but I remember I went to put my shoes on at one point and I nearly passed out. <laughs> so it was still quite thin, um, but we were getting used to it. So and we knew we were heading down. I yeah. think that's the reason we were all like, right, let's get up and go, you know, let's get down. And we were all okay about it. Yeah. So we'd actually made it. We On our first little drive, we got to this um, little cafe, which was at 4,500 meters. Mm-hmm. It was the highest point. It was yeah. crazy as well because it all flattened out for a long time. Mm-hmm. So even though you were so high, it was like the top of a flat mountain. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. And um It was uh, a fast food yurt, wasn't it? I yeah. don't know if we saw it on our maps me or whatever. <laughs> no, we just saw it, it just came across it. It was just really? like a little family's yurt. What did it say? Fast food something. So yes, yeah, so, oh, it was it was really cool though. Like and there was a little yurt. little old woman just going chai chai chai. She Amy. sounded like a witch. I thought she was putting a spell on me. <laughs> she was coming over and she I was think like, she did. And I was like <laughs> I caught chai at the end. I was like, tea? (laughs) Tea? I'll take one. Yeah. We were behind at this point. So as we were driving, we found this lake. So in the background, like the lake we found before was like really warm. We were quite low. So it was lush and refreshing. This one was like so high. We had hoodies on at this point. Yeah, yeah. It was snow-capped mountains. But Will Webb jumped in, didn't he? Of course he he did. He was like, I'm going for a dip. (laughs) Literally like the most freezing ice blue cold lake you can think of she yeah. runs into it i wish i went in with him now i would have loved that <sighs> hoff and that who's hot who was it wim hoff wim hoff method yeah ice water therapy not for me <laughs> not for me but one of the coolest parts of this section of the drive is we were now on the border of china yeah that's so we really were in cool. tajikistan we're on the right of us there was just like this fence and there was gaps in it as well so mm. you, you could put your foot on it and be like i'm in china yeah yeah we did that didn't we <laughs> yeah that was so cool like i loved that um the guy tanner who we were watching his videos before we went on the manga rally he he drove through china was it was it him because remember yeah. when you go into china you have to you redo got, your driving you got to get a bloody driving license in china to do it again <laughs> so that's the reason we never went anywhere near that and i think it's quite difficult to get the visas and everything to take a car into china mm. but yeah it's not really on the way but you could obviously pop in there you're in the area do you know what i mean yeah <laughs> So after hours and hours of more driving and more stunning scenery, we managed to make it to the border of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, the first thing the guard said was punishment, punishment, because they told us that we had this, we needed this certain bit of paper, mm. which we knew they'd made up because it was like colourful and yeah. you'd, you'd never seen it anywhere. No. But it was so weird. This this border, it wasn't even the official one. It was like the stop before the border. Do it you remember? It was really strange, wasn't it? It had like skulls of it was like, animals like a- along the top of the buildings. Like, yeah. Like and it was, um, eerie. It was really creepy. Yeah. And the guy 
all of the guys there were so dodgy. He had like these curly black shoes on that they were like wooden shoes and he'd taken them off and put them, he put them next to this fireplace mm. and he was cooking like this stew with like potatoes on the top. Yeah. It was like, it was like, oh, it was like his home slash they office. Lived there, yeah. And, um, but I think they were just, I think they'd made the whole thing up. I think it was a oh, fake 100%. order. Yeah. And he was like, um, bunch yeah, of squirrels, mate. Because you don't have this piece of paper. Um, you need to pay. And we were like, you're having a laugh. Like, we were been on this rally long enough now to know when something scammy was was about, you know? We yeah. weren't stupid. So um, we'd been told, if anything like that happens to you, just uh, tell them you're going to ring the embassy um, and ask for their names and stuff uh, just to make sure it's all legit. So we said that, and then they backed down then, didn't they? And they were mm. like, oh, just go through. They let us through. dodgy twats. Scumbags. Like. So then we actually got to the official border um, and uh, there was about 26 bikers there. Oh, yeah. And there was one fella with a typewriter. Oh, yeah. Who typed like my nan with one finger. <laughs> and um, so he had to process all the applications for the visa. So we were there for four hours mm. waiting. You remember going in there, you have to take your shoes off. Oh, There's yeah. like 26 biker men sat cross-legged on the floor with no shoes on. You're <laughs> yeah. just like... And I, I had to go in to a separate room because I was a driver. So I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these men like looking at me. I'm like, just, uh, you, I'm the driver of the car. I was like, yeah, go in that room. But yeah, I was questioned a lot about the car and everything. Really? On my own, I used to have to go off and say wh- who we Ask were and why we were going. Yeah, tell them about my pistol and that. <laughs> so that is it. That is... Tajikistan, I forgot our country is not now. It was so many. Remember, we, we did, didn't know how to say it coming into where? Tajikistan. And Kyrgyzstan, we were calling Kyrgyzstan for yeah. ages. We're terrible travelers, honestly. <laughs> so that is on the next podcast. We'll be talking about Kyrgyzstan. Um, I couldn't tell you right now because I can't remember what happened there. Can you? Kyrgyzstan. No. But I'm sure it was bloody brilliant. I'm so make sure. sure you come back for that one. <laughs> So if you're listening, uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts because the competition is still open until the last episode. Love it. So if you leave us a review, only if it's five star, yeah, you'll be entered into a comp to win some King in It merch. Not sure if I mentioned. If it's not five star, then I'll, I'll be coming for you. Amy will decapitate your knees. Yep. Um, and also if you're on YouTube, press subscribe or I'll come in at you. Yeah. Give it a share as well, guys. If you're enjoying it, you know, let people know. Um, because we only grow if people tell people about us. Do your bit, lads. Jesus, this is free content we're giving out for you. <laughs> and, and the Babbel sponsor, we, you, we're giving you free... Man, free Six months free language free? learning ah! and hours free entertainment every week. We're so good to you. Just take us for granted, all of you. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. One, two, three. Bye. <laughs>